back in the previous tutorial set we created the data source and data source and data connection pool in the weblogic server now we are ready to go forward and start actual development activities in this uh, tutorial will be creating a machine to machine use case we get a request or indication for machine to machine platform in a car leaves a geofence we implement a simple composite service and the first part of it is to go to a reservation system to see if the car is rented out or not and we'll be creating a mock-up system for this reservation system the first thing to do is to start actually the J developer integrated development environment this is the oracle's uh, kind of an integrated development environment which enables me to create composite services it also enables uh, to create java applications web applications i can also create database uh, schemas and i can also do uml modeling and so on so it's uh, comparable to eclipse which is a very common open source product in the beginning when i started this j developer it asked me the role that i want to have so i said that i will take the default role which uh, by default enables me all the wizards and all the functionalities if i had been kind of an doing just database stuff i could have selected the database role or if just java stuff i could have selected the java stuff so now this j developer is starting and while it gets it uh, it's getting started i can do an other totally optional part so i will go on other administrative co tool called enterprise manager and this is the tool used for managing this oracle fusion middleware so what i can do here is that i can see which Managed services, one servers are running in the environment, what uh, composite services I have deployed to this uh, kind of an installation. I can see if they are up and running or working well. I can view logs, I can in the undeploy stuff, and so on. So let's start. I have the same username and password, password weblogic, and welcome one. Let's go in. By the way, if you when you start this for the first time, it's also going to take a little bit of time because that's when this uh, environment is going to deploy the application. When I started this enterprise manager, uh, the first time I, I can see an overview of the status. So I have a in this weblogic domain, which is called domain one, I, I have two managed ser servers called admin server and BAM server. And this uh, BAM is actually a it's called business activity monitoring it's a real-time reporting tool which is usually used for showing the status of a process so i could for example use it to show how many requests are going through how many are successful how many are failing and so on but in this tutorial we will not be covering BAM. the other key managed server is admin server which is where all the GUIs, management GUIs are running and i will be also deploying to this server we will see it later so when I use this um, start weblogic command, which is now running here in the kind of an, terminal window in Windows, then I actually started this admin server. I need to do a separate command for starting the BAM server. So this is what I have. I can I can go all the kind of composite services. So SOA stuff is under SOA. There's the SOA infra. And by default, I have something called default. This is a so-called partitioning. In this installation I don't have much stuff. I have two kind of an almost uh, very simple kind of tutorial stuff running here in this default uh, uh, partition. But uh, usually when you do a little bit more development, you will have a lots of, uh, kind of composite services here, and it becomes hard to find what you are really working on. So because of that one, you might optionally decide to create a so-called composite service so let's say that uh, i will i will sorry I, on this level i can create an additional partition and these partitions are a little bit like they are like namespaces actually oh. so that is my, my windows seems to be having a hiccup day today so okay so let's say here manage partitions i will just create a new partition let's call this simple tutorial and i will be this is a kind 
kind of a target where I will be deploying all my composite service will be developing here, so they will also in this GUI under under this namespace or under this partition. But this is totally kind of an optional. So now this uh, J developer started, it's up and about, and we can actually start development. The first part we'll be doing is to create this uh, mock-up service for the reservation system. And the first thing is that we create a new application. This one starts a wizard. Let's call this, uh, for example, let's call this application, for example, vehicle status application. I will be saying I can select what type of application it might be a CEE application. I, I will say, say that this is a SOA application. Okay, so I th think I have an existing application of the same name. So let's say uh, I forgot to delete this. So let's call this uh, vehicle status application 2 because. I already have an existing. Let's create a project. Let's call this a vehicle status service. And it has selected me that this is a SOA project. This one kind of predefines some wizards that I can, I can use in, in my project. Say next. And here I can say what type of an application I create. So I will start from an empty. Empty, empty space, so I will just say that let's create an empty composite. What is Windows doing again? Some tricks on me. Okay. So now I have created an application, and under that one I have created a project. The oracle naming for these things is a little bit confusing in my mind. So I would actually, I would think about it in the other way around. That you have a project, and then you have a kind of an application under that one. But uh, the na naming is so that uh, on the highest level you have an application, and under that one you have a, a project. And every project becomes a kind of a deployable composite service which you can independently develop and then deploy to this uh, kind of runtime environment. So now we have created an empty composite. Uh, we are not yet ready to start because we actually don't have anything in the database at the moment. So the first thing typically in application development is that you will create a database table where you will put stuff. So let's go here and let's say Let's uh, first we need to download a tool called SQL Developer. And this is an Oracle's uh, free tool that you can use to kind of manage schemas and, and create uh, create tables, manage schemas, uh, kind of an, uh, also input data. So. This is the tool you need to accept the kind of license license schema, then you are ready to kind of start downloading. So you can download the version that's relevant for your environment and then start just using it. So I already have it downloaded and installed, so I don't have need to do it. So it's just I can just show where it is. So I have installed it here. It's quite developer. I can just an exe file so I can double click on that one and it starts uh, this uh, SQL developer. This is similar to Squirrel or SQL Workbench so or other, other tools that uh, are available for the open source side. Seems to be taking 
surprising number of uh, times. So. Right. Okay, I see we have some old stuff here. <clears throat> so the first thing to do here once you have the SQL developer ongoing is to create a connection to the database. So here is this uh, green button. So let's press that one. <coughs> and let's call this uh, connection, for example, simple. And the username called simple. It's a username is welcome one. I can save save password. This is uh, let's try to type it again so that it is for sure All right. Okay, everything seems to be okay. See this X save. I can test this now. See if it works. Okay, success is status is success, and I can connect right away. All right, we are now connected to this um, using this uh, user. We are connected to the local XE database. We don't have any tables at the moment, so we are ready to kind of go about and start uh, creating the first new table. So right click on the tables and press uh, new table. Let's then create a table, a table called vehicle status, for example. And I can, there's actually an advanced mode and simple mode, so if I want to kind of edit these columns in a, with more features, I can go to this uh, advanced mode. So let's add a couple of uh, columns. So let's have the first column, for example, called license number. Let's say that that one is, for example, Wartsar. Let's make it 16. Let's say that it is not null and it's a primary key. And let's, let's add an other column. So let's use this advanced, advanced mode so I can add another column like this. And let's uh, call this uh, status. So let's give this is uh, on purpose as uh, simple as possible. Let's make this as uh, 16 as well. Let's say that it cannot be now either. And then let's say OK. So now I have created a table called vehicle status. It has two, two columns. I can go here and see what it is. I can open it. <coughs> I can see the definition. If I want to edit it, I could edit it here, so I can go to edit mode, I can add fields. I could add fields if I want, I could delete fields, so if I, I can't delete the primary key, but I could delete other, other fields uh, and so on. And if I want to kind of add data manually, I can go to this data format, I can press the button, kind of insert row button here, uh, let's put some data here, so let's say that uh, ABC123 is for example rented, and uh, let's say that ABC999 is uh, say free, 
let's say that A, B, C, 4, 5, 6 is uh, Nathan and so on. And then I can commit this one, so I can say commit changes, and now I have a couple of rows in the database. So, in this tutorial I have shown you how to create applications, or how to start this development in Oracle Source with this J developer IDE and using this SQL developer we have created a new table and we have put manually some data. So this is a good place to stop this part and thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.